Hello everyone, let's look at permutations. The problem statement is, we are given an array nums of distinct integers. We want to return all possible permutations, and we can return in any order. Let's look at first example. The input nums is 1, 2, 3. The output is array of arrays. So it has 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. The second example, input is 0, 1. The output is 0, 1, 1, 0. Third example, input is 1. The output is also 1, but inside a subarray. This is a typical problem. We can use recursion to solve it. The idea behind the problem is, say if we want to find a permutation for 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then, we can first take 1 out, and then we find the permutations for 2, 3, and 4. And then, to find the permutations for 2, 3, 4, we can take 2 out, and find the permutation for 3 and 4. And then, find the permutation for 3 and 4, we can take 3 out, and then, find the permutations for 4. So, we have this recursive structure. And then, when we jump back to the top, and then, we can take 2 out, and then, get the permutation for 1, 3, and 4, and so on and so forth. Let's look at the code implementation here. Let us first handle all the basic cases. So, this is our three basic cases. The length is 0, 1, and 2. Let's look at our recursion function. For the input array, we can try to take individual element out, and then get the permutations for the rest of the element. And then, we concatenate the original element with the permutation result. So, we definitely have a loop. And then, let's leverage the JavaScript inbuilt method. Let's use map to loop through the input method. And for the map, we need to pass in a method. For individual n, Let's first use this uh, filter method to get the, all the rest elements, and then let's run the permutation. So, we get the permutations for the rest of the element, and then let's do the concatenation. So here, this n is element is the element we take out, and then the i is our permutation result. And then, in the end, we can simply return this guy. Let's look at the structure for this i. This i will be something like this. That's array of arrays. So we have subarrays inside array. So when we want to concatenate n with element i, we want to concatenate n to the subarrays. So to do this, we can simply flat the subarray. The depth is 1. So this will be our solution. Or we can also even simplify the solution using flat map. This is equivalent with adding a flat 1. And then let's further simplify this inner so this inner callback method. Let's, let's take this, replace this, and then put the map 
all the way in the bottom and then we can simply return this guy This will be a solution when we leverage all the JavaScript inbuilt method. Let's submit. Uh, looks like we have a problem here. Uh, let's um, try to solve that problem. So I guess for this check, we can ignore because the length is uh, minimum length is one. So for this one, okay, I guess the problem is we need to put it here okay let's sum it again and it passed let's look at the complexity here I guess for space it's n factorial n is the size of the input array because for permutation the total solution is n factorial because for the first position we have n options that's to pick one out of n numbers to put at the first position in second position, we have n minus 1, and third, n minus 2, and so on and so forth. So in total, the space complexity is n factorial. For time, it's also n factorial. This is because we have this recursive st structure. And first time, the loop, how many times we need to loop through, that's n. The second time, we need to loop n minus 1. The third time, n minus 2, and so on and so forth. So, that's a space and time complexity. What if we cannot use the inbuilt method? What can we do to simulate the process? I would propose we have a recursive helper method, and the parameter we're passing is the array, start index, and index. It should look like this. So this is to get the permutation for the input for the input array from index start to index end. And then and then for our input array nums, what we should call it? We should call it perm nums that start is zero and is nums dot less minus one. We should call it like this. And apart from this, we should have an array in the global scope. And then, in our this recursive helper method, we can push the result into this rest, rest array. Let's look at how we can simulate the process. So definitely we need to uh, have a loop for the input array and loop from start to end. And then, inside the loop, we want to run the permutation for the rest after we're taking out the first element. That's to run perm, same array, that's i plus 1, that's the next element. The end is still the end. By doing this, we'll get the permutation for the same array and then starts from i plus 1 to the end. And then for the second time in this loop, what we need to do, we need to swap the position. It's like first time we take one out, we run the permutation for 2, 3, 4, and second time, we need to sw swap the position between 1 and 2. becomes like this. We, get the we run the permutation for 1, 3, 4. We need to sw swap the position. How we can do that? We can uh, simply uh, either use a helper method to swap, or we can use this uh, inline expression. So we can swap start with i. So it's like we swap 1 and 2. And third time, we swap 1 and 3. And after this, we need to restore 
this input array, we need to revert it back to 1, 2, 3, 4 before we do the swap between 1 and 3. So that's why we need to restore this input array. We need to run the same swap again after we jump out of this uh, previous permutation. So we do the same thing here to reiterate. So we first swap i, we start, and then we run the permutation from i plus 1 to end, then we swap it back, and then for the next iteration, i increase, but star remain the same. So we swap again, we do permutation, and then we swap it back. Let's look at the termination condition for this uh, recursive method. We're passing array, start and end. If star equals n, then we can simply return and stop doing it again. So if star index equals n index, we simply push this current array. Here we need to have a, have a copy. We cannot uh, just uh, push the array into our rest because later this array, the index will get swapped. In the end, it will, uh, everything will be the same. So we need to have a, have a copy of this array and then return. So after doing this, we have our everything pushed into rest. And then we can simply return rest. Let's uh, sum it. Let's sum it again. Uh, we got this uh, another problem. I guess we need to uh, first define before we before we call. And another small thing here is uh, it should be it should be star plus one because we we here we swap i and star, so we should get permutation from star one to n. Let's try to uh, sum it again. Uh, this time it passed. Yeah, I'm sorry. It took us a couple of times to get it accepted. So for this recursive method, we did not change the size of the input array, but we swap some of its indexes. It's here. And then we can have this uh, uh, start index and end index. Once they meet, we simply push this array into our rest. So if the whole process have confused you, uh, feel free to uh, print out the start and indexes and this uh, input array. And uh, we can uh, we can see even more clear uh, what's the recursion process. And also, uh, probably we don't need this anymore. Finally, let's look at another solution. Uh, it is to construct a recursive tree from top down. Uh, it's like deep first search for a tree. Uh, let's uh, look at the code. And uh, we still need this uh, rest. And this uh, uh, for this recursive helper method, we no longer need uh, these two. Let's remove them. And then we still need a for loop. Uh, but this time it should uh, from zero uh, to the So from zero to norms dot length, that's the depth of our tree. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's first do this. So when we call it, uh, we can simply pass an uh, empty array because uh, this array, the size of this array will change, and then uh, once this array dot length equals norms dot length, we can push the array inside. So that's our um, stop condition. And here, uh, it's no longer swapping. Uh, you should change. You should change change to this, and then we need to uh, change the size of this array. So what we can do is array dot push uh, num size. We push it in, and then we run this again, 
And after this, we simply pop the value out. And because we, we, when we um, build this tree, uh, we need to make sure if array has already have these nums, uh, we, don't, we don't run it again. So that's uh, if it already includes uh, nums i. We simply continue. Let's try to sum it first. Uh, it passed. Uh, the, the structure here we have is uh, really similar to our previous solution. Uh, we push a value in and then we pop it out uh, to restore this uh, array. Uh, we also have this if condition here. Uh, this is to stop us from uh, pushing rep repetitive value inside this array. Uh, and if this has uh, confused you, uh, feel free to print out the array before and push uh, before and after push and pop out value so it will be more clear at uh, which layer of the recursion we are at right now um, like we have one two three four and then uh, we push one two three four in and then we jump out to four and then to three and then we push four again and we push three again so we have one two three four and one two uh, four three um, and for the complexity uh, the time and space uh, remain like this uh, if you have any further questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.